As we know, after his resurrection, Jesus, he commissioned the 11 disciples to let the world know his good news. Of course, we know that the Great Commission wasn't just for the 11, but it is for all who follow Christ today. We as genuine believers, we are to let the world know about Christ. We are to let the world know about Jesus and his good news. So after having listened to the Lord and recognized the great depth of love that he has for us, it should not be hard for us to let the world know that God is good. So I ask you today this question, will you let the world know about Christ? I ask you today, will you let the world know about all that God has done for you? I ask you this simple question today. Will you let the world know that God is good? Here in our scripture today from the 10th chapter of Matthew's gospel, we will see that Jesus said there in the 27th verse, Whatever I tell you in the dark, saying that whatever I tell you in secret, mm -hmm. Jesus said, speak in the light. He said, and what you hear in the ear, what you have listened to, mm -hmm. Jesus, he said, preach on the house tops. So consider for a moment that if you're preaching the word from the top of your house, you're preaching to be seen by all. all right. <laughs> May I suggest to you that this is a call not to keep the word of God to yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. May I suggest to you today that you are to share the word of God with all of those that are around you. Again, you are to let the world know about the word of God. You are to let the world know the good news. You are to let the world know that God is good. Do you hear me here today? This thought, it reminds me of what Jesus taught to the then 12 disciples on his sermon from the Mount. See, on the mountain, Jesus, he taught that they would be lights of the world. And as lights of the world, Jesus, he said that they were to be like a city set on a hill whose light could not be hidden. As genuine believers, we should also let our light shine. We are to let our light shine before others so that they can see our good works, Jesus said. And so that they too can also glorify the Lord. Mm -hmm. The hope is that not only are we seen on the top of our houses, preaching and sharing the good news of God, mm -hmm. but that the word of God is received by those who hopefully stop and listen. All right. All right. You see the word that we share is the word that comes from the mouth of Jesus. It is again, the good news of God's love. It is the good news of God's mercy. It is the good news of God's salvation. So the word that we share from the top of our houses, figuratively speaking here, it is, I want you to understand today, it is a saving word. The word that you share with the world today, it can save someone's soul. Come on, come on. Now, while some of us, again, figuratively speaking, while some of us get on the top of our houses to let the world know that God is good, to let the world know about him, there are others of us. There are many who are fearful. There are many who are fearful of getting on top of their houses. 
there are many who are fearful of letting the world know what God has done for them. They are fearful of letting the world know that God is good. And so, you know, I would think to myself, if I were you sitting in the congregation today, I would think to myself, why? Why be afraid to let the world know about God? Some of you may be afraid to let the world know that God is good. And again, we may ask, why is that the case? Well, some of us, we are afraid that we may say something that is wrong. That is a very great fear that many of us have. And this fear, it keeps us from getting on to the top of our houses, again, figuratively speaking, and letting the world know that God is good. On the other hand, some of us, we are afraid of what others may think. Some of us, we are afraid of what others may say Mm -hmm. about us Mm -hmm. getting on the top of our houses and letting the world know. Some of us, we are afraid of how others may judge us. Because of our faith in the invisible God, Mm -hmm. the sky man, as some people like to mockingly say, we are afraid of the scoffers. We are afraid of the mockers. We are afraid of being made fun of because we are preaching about all that God has done for us. Lastly, some of us, we are afraid of confrontation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We are afraid that, you know, some will move against us. And so because we are fearful, therefore, of people, Mm -hmm. we desire to move in a manner to where we will be well received. Mm -hmm. We will move in a manner to where people will like us. Mm -hmm will say things that people will love to hear because we desire ourselves. We don't want to be hated. Mm -hmm. We want to be loved. Mm -hmm. Personally, I tell you today that I can understand these fears because at one point in time I had, and I shared in those same fears. I was afraid that I may say something that was wrong. Mm -hmm. I was afraid of what people may say about me preaching the word of God. I remember my dad, when we used to have performances in, in the band and he would, the choir would get up and sing. I was in the band, but when the chorus would get up and they would sing something of, 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 of the faith, because that was Miss Hollis. If she was going to sing, she was going to have her chorus sing something about the Lord. My dad would jump up and he would stand up. He would proud, you know, to hear it. And I would always be, you know, Hey, you know, get down. You know, I was, Afraid of what people was going to say about him. And I was afraid of what people were going to say about me, my dad. You know, hey, Leo, dad did this. You know, I was little. I, you know, I was just afraid, you know, of, of what others would say. In sharing in that fear and having overcome those fears, I must warn today that we should be wary of those fears. We should be wary of where those fears can take or better yet, where they cannot take us. You see, our fears in general, they will always hold us back from being able to move forward. We will sit still. We won't push ahead. We won't move to actually accomplish any goals that we have if we are fearful. In our walk of faith, our fears, I tell you today, that they will do the same. They will hold us back. They will hold us back from pushing forward. They will hold us back from moving forward in our faith. And and I say to you today that your faith, it must not sit still. Your faith, it should always move forward. We should always be active in our faith. Let us remember what Peter's fears did to him after Jesus was arrested in the garden. You know, for a little bit there, Peter, he tried to follow alongside John in the courtyard. But Mm -hmm. scripture tells us that as Peter stood around the fire, 
that the people was pointing and say, hey, weren't you one of those that followed Jesus? Yeah, yeah. And Jesus said, no, no, not me. And then one said, oh, I know that you was there. I saw you. Yeah. And, and Peter, for fear of what the people would say about him, what the people would do to him, he said, I don't know the man. All right. yeah. And he said it again. And then Jesus turned and looked at Peter and Peter caught his eyes as well. And, and I tell you that, that Peter, he was critically wounded in his spirit. He was hard broken in his spirit. And all he could do was turn away, walk away and weep bitterly is what scripture tells us. You don't want to be so fearful of others that your fear drives you to being ashamed of Christ. You see, I tell you today that when you are ashamed of Christ, it will critically wound your soul. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, you don't want to be critically wounded in your heart today. Even more, as we see here in my key verse for today, those who are ashamed and deny Christ before men, Jesus, he said that they will be denied by him before the father. Do you want to be denied by Jesus today because you were ashamed and you decided to say, I don't know the man. Right. Jesus, even worse, he said there in the 38th verse there in the 10th chapter of Matthew's gospel. Mm -hmm. Jesus, he said that those who do not take their cross and follow after him, he said that they are not worthy of him. I ask you today, are you moving to be worthy of Christ? All right. All right. I certainly hope that you are moving to be worthy of Christ today. Yeah. Yeah. I hope that you are moving to not be denied by him before the father who again is in heaven. In order for us to let the world know about Christ and his salvation, mm -hmm. I say to you today that we must overcome those fears. Yes, we cannot be held back by being afraid. Come on, come on, come. We must overcome our fears so that we can let the world know from the top of our houses all that God has done for us. Yeah, yeah. We must overcome our fears so that we can get on the top of our houses and tell somebody, tell all of those who will stop and listen that my God is good. Will you let the world know that God is good today or will you be too afraid? Will you be, as they say, chicken? As they used to say in the old West, will, be, will you be yellow? I hope not. So let us take a look at how we overcome these fears so that those who have those fears can begin to overcome them so that they can begin to move with courage to be able to get on top of their houses and to be able to tell somebody about Jesus Christ. So let's first tackle that first one that I had mentioned. Let's start off with those who are afraid to let the world know about God because they are afraid they will say something that may be wrong. All right. I will start off by asking a question. Mm -hmm. And this is the question that I will ask. Did you know that God will put a word in your mouth? Mm -hmm. Did you know that God will put a word in your mouth as to what it is that you should say to someone? Yeah. Now, this is shown to us through scripture when Jesus mm -hmm. first sent out the 12 to minister to the lost sheep of Israel. We see it there again, looking at the 10th chapter of Matthew's gospel. The fifth and the sixth verse tells us that Jesus, he sent the 12 out to preach that the kingdom of heaven was at hand. Yeah, yeah. Like them, again, we have been commissioned. We are to minister we are to let the world know that salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. 
like many of us, the disciples, they were considered to have not been well versed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Scripture shows us that the religious leaders, they believed that the disciples, they were not well versed when it came to knowing the word of God. So I would say to you that the 12, they faced the same challenge, the same great challenge that many of us face today in that, you know, they were sharing a word that many people believe that they didn't know very well. Mm -hmm. Many people would be ready to call them out on whether or not they knew the word of God. And that's how it is for us today. Many people, we feel like they're ready to jump on us if we happen to slip up mm -hmm. and if we happen to say the wrong thing. Now, Jesus, we will see, he encouraged them there in the 19th and in the 20th verse there. <clears throat> he encouraged them not to worry about how or what they should speak. He said to them that in the moment that they speak, it would not be them who spoke, but the spirit of the father. Jesus said that it would be the spirit of the father who spoke in them. All right. Do you see what Jesus is saying there? Mm -hmm. Let us understand that the spirit of the father is the Holy spirit. Mm -hmm. The Holy spirit, which all who love Christ, who all who are of genuine faith and obediently keep, his word, his way, we shall, Jesus said, receive. The helper, mm -hmm. the spirit of truth. Mm -hmm. We should know the role that the Holy Spirit plays in our life today. The Holy Spirit serves in a role to lead us sincere believers unto all truth. Through the Holy Spirit, Jesus said that we will bear witness mm -hmm. not by our own wisdom, mm -hmm. but by the wisdom that is of God. Right. By the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. we will share the truth, not just any truth, not some subject of truth, not some object of truth, but the divine truth. I don't know if you hear me here today. This is the word that will be put in your mouth by the Lord. So I say to you today, don't be afraid that you may say the wrong thing. Lean on the Holy Spirit. You shouldn't be getting out there on your own wisdom. Right. You should be leaning on the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, yeah. You see, the Holy Spirit will guide you into what you should be saying. Right. Now, does that mean that you should go without reading scripture? Yeah. Does that mean that you should go without studying and dwelling in the word of God? Absolutely not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are to all be diligent in the word yeah, yeah. so that we are ready to let the world know about the Lord in season and out of season. Mm -hmm. all right. You see, when we are diligent in the word of God, when we dwell in the word of God, we will always be ready. Oh, yeah. We won't have to get ready. Right. I don't know if you get what I mean by that. We'll be ready to let the world know about the Lord with absolutely no shame, no embarrassment. Again, we will be ready at all times. Now, are you one of those that fears what others may think about you? How they may look at you? How they may judge you? Because you have believed and because you have decided to get on the top of that house and shout, letting the world know about God. Yeah, yeah. And there are many of us, I tell you today, that worry about how somebody's going to judge us. Right. Sadly, some of us who once walked by faith have fallen out of the faith because we let somebody judge us. 
Rather than falling out of faith, some of us, we have gone silent, not said a word. Why? Because we let somebody judge us and we let it get to us. So again, I I tell you today, and, and I would even ask a question to that. Why? Why care about what somebody else is going to think about you? Why care what somebody else is going to say about you? Why, why be concerned? Who cares what they think? I'm being real here. Who cares what they have to say about you when you have gotten on the top of your house to sell somebody that God is good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who cares how they may judge you? Mm -hmm. What is their judgment? What is it going to do to you? Jesus, he said there to the disciples in the 28th verse, he said, do not fear those who kill the body, Mm -hmm. but cannot kill the soul. They don't have any power. So why care about their judgment? So I encourage you today, and I say to you today, don't worry about what others think about you. Don't worry about what others have to say about you. Don't worry about how others will judge you because at the end of the day, God is the only judge. God is the one true judge of all of us. His judgment, I say to you today, that is all that should matter to you. And we have learned and we know that what Jesus is going to judge of us with every knee bows at his name is whether we believe or not. Now, admittedly, all of this is easier said than done, isn't it? As Jesus actually admits there in that verse that we, mankind, we are more than capable of bringing harm upon each other, whether it is physical, mental, emotional, or spiritual. All we have to do is take a look at the story of Job, and we can see that we can be harmed physically, mentally, and emotionally. We can even reflect on our own stories. As I imagine, all of us have gone through some things and we've had some people come up to us and say, hey, why are you going to church? Why are you believe in God? Talking down to us because of our faith. The one thing that we learn from the story of Job is no matter how much the enemy desired to stump him out, the enemy couldn't stump him out. The one thing that we learn from our story is that no matter how much our enemy talks about us, moves against us, tries to to tear us down, our enemy cannot destroy us. As Paul said, we are hard pressed on every side, but look at us. We are still standing here today. And I say to you today, you don't have to fear what others may think about you, what they may say about you, and how they are going to judge you. They cannot destroy you. They cannot kill your soul. God is the one who is in charge. God is the one who is in control. And our God said that he will uplift all of us don't fear what man may say or think or how they may judge you. When you begin to fear what others may say or do to you because of your faith, just remember again that God is on your side. Jesus, he has already proclaimed our victory when he said that he has overcome the world. So let us move. I say to you today, Let us move in the strength of David, who proclaimed that the Lord is or was his light, that the Lord was his salvation. And David, he asked, 
Who shall I fear? That's right. Right. When the Lord is your light and your salvation, you don't have anybody to fear. Yeah. Yeah. David said that the Lord was the strength of his life. That's right. And he asked, well, who should I be afraid of? When God is the strength of your life, you don't have to be afraid of anybody. Uh -huh. I don't know if you hear me here today. Uh -huh. yeah. So why are you afraid? Why do you fear what someone thinks about you, say about you, or how they may judge you because you've gotten up on the top of your house and you started letting the world know that God is good. You let them come along the way and judge you and then you went silent or you got off the top of your house to walk with them. Don't walk with those who would make you feel like you are ashamed of God. They ain't no good for you. See, in his sermon on the Mount, Jesus, he declared to the disciples, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And Jesus said, blessed are you when they revile you. Jesus said, blessed are you when they persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Jesus said, rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven. Listen to that. Right. Yeah. Yes, in the world you may be harmed, mm -hmm. but the Lord has told us that nobody can take us out of his hands. Jesus proclaimed that he gives his sheep eternal life yeah. and nobody can snatch them out of his hand. And then he said, oh, the father, he said that the father is greater than all. And again, Jesus said that can't nobody, can't nothing snatch his sheep out of the father's hand. What do you have to be afraid of? If you fear what others think, say, or do to you, I want you to know that your soul is always in the care of the Lord. It is always in God's hands and in God's hands, you are forever protected. Wherever it is that life takes you and whoever stands in your way, just know today that you are protected by God. Don't be afraid of the scoffers. Don't be afraid of those that will make fun of you. Don't be afraid of their jokes. Don't be afraid of their laughter. Because at the end of the day, you are going to be the one that is rejoicing when you walk through the gates of God's heavenly kingdom. At the end of the day, you are the one who will be greatly blessed. Now, I know that nobody wants to be disliked. I know that nobody wants to be hated. But the honest truth is that when you get on the top of your house and you start preaching about God, you start letting the world know about his divine truth, the truth is not everybody's going to like you. Not everybody is going to love you. Some will be offended. Some are going to be disgusted. Some are going to reject you. Some are going to flat out hate you. They will do this because they, at the end of the day, they despise God. And because they despise God, they despise his word. They'll dress it up and they'll say, hey, I, I don't like religion. But at the end of the day, they are despising the Lord, their creator. To the 12, Jesus, he warned them that they would be hated by those that were around them. Just as he was hated by those that were around him. You see, the world wasn't a big fan of Jesus. The world did not love Jesus. And so, you know, we would think to ourselves, why did the world hate Jesus when, again, God loved the world and he gave the world his only begotten son? Why would the world turn around and hate Jesus? Well, the world hated Jesus because he was not of the world. And because he was not of the world, Jesus, he spoke against the world. And the world despised him. 
But I tell you today that Jesus, he didn't mind that those who are of the world didn't love him. Jesus, he said to the disciples, do not think that I came to bring peace on earth. We see it there in the 34th verse. And Jesus said, I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. Now, some of us, we are going to hear that. We're going to listen to that statement. Some of us, we're going to look at that scripture there. We're going to look at it kind of strange, aren't we? The reason why we're going to look at it kind of strange, because it conflicts with our idea with what we have seen in scripture that Jesus came to, to save the world. Mm-hmm. You see, we, 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 we believe the idea that Jesus came to save the world. We, we conflict it with this idea for peace that we have in our head. Yes. I, I say to you today that Jesus certainly did come to save the world and not to condemn the world. Mm-hmm. However, in order for Jesus to save the world, in order for Jesus to save souls, he had to first rebuke the world. Do you see what I just said there? In Jesus, he had to first get on the world. He had to correct the world. Jesus, he rebuked the world with the sword of truth. He rebuked the world with that divine truth. As the writer of the book of Hebrews said, the sword of the divine truth, it is sharper than any two edged sword. It pierces to the heart. It pierces to the soul. And when that sword starts piercing to our heart, when that sword starts piercing to the soul, we ouch, that hurts. That's what we shout out. The truth, it hurts. And we don't want that pain. We don't want that hurt. We don't want that truth. As you have heard me say before, nobody likes to be rebuked. We don't like to, to be rebuked because we often feel like we in the right. Those who are of the world, I say to you today, they move with that carnal mind. They move with that carnal mindset and, and those who are of the world, they often feel like they are always in the right. So I say to you that when you stand on the top of your house to let the world know that divine truth, the world, they're going to turn around and they're going to hate you. So you better be prepared to be hated Mm -hmm. because you are standing in the name of Jesus and you are letting the world know about his good news. You see, like Jesus in sharing the divine truth, again, it will show that you are no longer of the world. And you will be despised because you are no longer of this world. Now, you may think that the only ones who are not like you will be those who are not close to you. But we will see here in the 21st and in the 22nd verse that those who may despise us because of our faith may be those who are actually closest to us. Jesus said that brother will deliver up brother to death. And the father, his child, and children will rise up against parents and cause them to be put to death because they are standing in the name of Jesus. Jesus, he spoke to the disciples about how he had come to set a man against his father. We see it said there in the 34th verse. Jesus said that he had come to set a daughter against her mother and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Again, by delivering the word, Jesus, he caused divisions within households. Those who share blood, those who were related to one another, began to despise each other because some believed in Jesus Christ. Understand that when you let the world know about the divine truth, those who at once stand closest to you may be the ones who stand the furthest away because you are standing up when you hear a a song about Jesus. They may stand furthest away from you when you correct somebody 
on the good news. They may stand furthest away from you when you shout out the name of Jesus. Will you begin to tell all of those around you what he has done for you? That God has brought you a mighty long way. Will you tell somebody that God is good? They may run away. They may run away from you. Yeah, you may desire to be loved by all, uh, but Jesus, he warned at the end of his Beatitudes, he warned, woe to you when all men speak well of you. For they did the same to the false prophets. The false prophets, they have their reward today. And I tell you that their reward is not in heaven. Their reward is not in heaven because they did not rebuke sin. But rather, they rejoiced in sin. And they allowed others to continue to move in sin, saying, hey, ain't nothing wrong with it. If you are loved by the world, it says something about you. If you are loved by the world, it is because you speak of the world, according to the world, and then you live according to the world as well. In other words, you have joined in on their sin and you're living right along with them according to sin. And the world ain't got no problem with that. And I say to you today, do not be afraid to be despised by the world. Don't be afraid to be despised by the world because you have chosen to stand on the top of your house because you have chosen to let the world know all about the Lord, our God. Again, in our key verse, Jesus said that the one who confesses him before men, he, Jesus Christ, will confess before the Father. However, and this is a big however here, the one who is ashamed and denies Christ before men, Jesus, he turned around and said that he will deny before the Father who is in heaven. Again, I ask you today, do you want to be denied by Jesus? So again, I say to you today, don't be ashamed of Christ. Don't be ashamed to confess Christ to the world. Don't be afraid to let the world know that God has blessed you. Don't be afraid to let the world know that, that God has brought you through all of your hardships. Ain't no way in the world I'm going to be afraid to let the world know that God brought me through my five years of dialysis. I ain't going to be afraid to let the world know that I have overcome it because of Jesus Christ. I ain't going to be afraid to let the world know about the good news of God. I ain't going to be afraid to let the world know that God is good. Will you be afraid? And see, the Lord loves us. He has blessed us and he has shown us his mercy. He has shown us and he has given to us salvation. So why? I ask you today, why should we be afraid? Because of people. Why should we be ashamed to let the world know all that God has done for us? Jesus said that those who do take their cross and those that do follow him, they are worthy of him. That's essentially what we see Jesus say there in that 38th verse. And he said there that those who follow him will find life. Life that is not of this world, but life that is in the kingdom of God, life that is eternal, life that is filled with eternal happiness and eternal joy and eternal peace. Yes, in the world, we will be scoffed. We will be mocked because of our faith. However, God has said that he will reward us openly in the presence of our enemies while we are here in this world. And then guess what? When this world passes away, 
because as we spoke about in our Sunday school lesson today, this world, it is going to pass away. It is temporary. It is fading away day by day. We will again be rewarded. And our enemies are going to, to see us be rewarded with that eternal reward by the Lord. Mock and laugh all they want today, but you're going to be dancing and you're going to be stumping and you're going to be shouting all over God's heaven. You have the victory today. You have nothing to be ashamed of today. I don't know if you hear me here today. Well, the world did not love you because you declared the word. God, I tell you today, will continue to love you. And God, he will exalt you. And Jesus, again on the mount, said to the disciples, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. I want to be called the son of God today. And you should desire the same as well. You see, I don't need the love. I don't need the praise of men. I don't know if you hear me there today. I don't need their love. I don't need their... I don't need their applause. I don't need their praise. And I don't seek it. I seek my praise. I seek my love, my glorifying from the Lord. Because again, his love and his praise, it is far greater than that that is of me. So in all that God has done for us, we ought not ever be ashamed to get on the top of our house. We ought not ever be ashamed to let the world know that God is good. Amen. 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 Amen.